How's it going, everybody? Welcome back to Civil Engineering Academy. This is Jason. All right. So this question says a five feet width wall footing constructed on, uh, constructed on the surface of a silty sand soil is shown in Figure One. And to avoid the possible damage due to frost action, the footing will be constructed on three feet below original ground, as shown in Figure Two. Okay. And the unit weight and the angle of friction for this soil are 125 pcf, and the theta is 30 degree. And the question is, which of the following statement is correct? Okay, so let's go through the statement first. Statement A: bearing capacity for both figures is the same. Statement B: bearing capacity for figure one is about 50 percent more. Than the bearing capacity for Figure Two. C bearing capacity for Figure Two is about eighty-six percent more than the bearing capacity for Figure One. And D bearing capacity for Figure Two is about one hundred and thirty-seven percent more than the bearing capacity for Figure One. Okay. So here we have two situations. Here, originally we designed the wall footing. Sitting on top of the ground surface, okay, but、uh, in order to avoid the possible possible damage, we try to lower the footing by three feet. So there's a three feet embedment above the bottom of the footings, okay. So we're trying to see how much difference of the bearing capacity between these two situation. All right, so. The most common equation that we're going to use to calculate the bearing capacity will be Terzaki bearing capacity equation. And for a sand soil type, we should use equation 36.9 in your CER menu. This will give you the equation to calculate the ultimate bearing capacity for the sand soil. So this equation look like this: 0.5 times B. Times gamma times n gamma plus p q plus gamma d f times n q. Okay, so here b is the width of the footings, which is this dimension. Okay, and gamma is your unit weight. N gamma and n q. Will be the bearing capacity factors, okay? So you can use table thirty-six point two to look for these two factors, and these are all depends on the friction angles. So for thirty degree friction angle, your n gamma will be nineteen point seven n q. Is twenty two point five, all right, and then PQ is the surcharge on top of the surface. But for our case, we don't have a surcharge, okay. And then gamma unit weight DF will be your embedment, okay. So this is going to be your DF. But for your first case, there's no DF, so DF will be zero, okay. So Let's use this equation to calculate the bearing capacity for these two cases. So, bearing capacity for Figure One is going to be 0.5 b is five feet, right here. Okay, n gamma one two five. I'm sorry, gamma one two five, n gamma nineteen point seven, plus、um, p q equals zero. Gamma is one two five, but your DF is zero. NQ twenty two point five. So basically, we don't have to calculate this part. So that's only the first portion. So that will give you sixty one fifty six point two five psf. Okay, this is the bearing capacity for Figure One. Let's calculate the bearing capacity for Figure Two. So the first part will be the same, okay? 
But the second part is we have a DF. So that's 125 times 3 times 22.5. And that will give you 14,593.75 PSF. All right. So let's see how much we gained from lowering the, the footings. So your bearing capacity for figure 2 divided by bearing capacity for figure 1, that's 14. 593, yep, 593.7 divided by 6156.25. So this is going to be 2.37. Okay, so that means the bearing capacity for figure two is 2.7 of uh, 2.37 more. Um, so I'm sorry, 2.37. So the increment right here will be 2.37 minus 1. So that's 1.37. Okay. So that means the bearing capacity for figure 2 is 1.37 more than the bearing capacity for figure 1. So that's 137% more. Okay. So your... Answer should be statement D, bearing capacity for figure 2 is about 137% more than the bearing capacity for figure 1. Okay, so this is your answer. Alright, so that's it for today. Thank you for watching.